Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Peter and in this video I'm going to be sharing some of the lessons I learned from reading How Doctors Think. Now How Doctors Think is a medical memoir by Dr. Jerome Groupman. It was published in 2007, has about 305 pages in hardcover and it's a really interesting medical memoir. At the time of publishing the book, Dr. Jerome had about 25 years of clinical experience as an oncologist. Of course, that's a lot of time spent um, caring for patients. In the book, Dr. Jerome talked about a lot of subjects. He talked about stories from managing cancer patients. He talked about cognitive bias among doctors. He talked about adopting research to clinical practice. He talked about pharmaceutical companies, the influence of marketing on prescription of drugs. He also talked about the role of media and the medicine. But the last chapter really caught my attention and in this chapter he was talking about lost diagnosis. As any fourth year medical students will tell you, when we want to arrive at a diagnosis, we start by taking patient history, then we do a physical examination, then we request for some investigations and finally we we'll arrive at a diagnosis. However, seasoned clinicians can follow this process by the books and at the end of the day not have a diagnosis. So what do you do as a medical doctor when you have this situation? You have taken the history, you've performed the physical examination, you've requested for investigations and at the end of the day you still don't have a diagnosis. What do you do at this point? Now on this channel I do a little bit of medical lifestyle and a little bit of academics. If you're interested in this video, OSCE clackings, physical examination and things like that, please subscribe to this channel and watch out for more of our content. Now back to Dr. Jerome's story. What do you do when you've carried out the process by the books and you still don't have a diagnosis? This is what he advised to be able to break your cognitive bias when you are in this situation. Dr. Jerome said the most common error when it comes to misdiagnosis is miscommunication. That is the first point of detour. And at this point, you have to consult the patient again and ask questions like, tell me the story like you've never told me before. So when you ask this question again, you begin to pay more attention to subtle clinical clues that the patient might have said and that you might have missed. If you are a patient, this is the point to actually offer to retell your story to the clinician. The reason why it's important to ask this question is because that 30 year old known Pepsi Cosa disease patient might have described that epigastric pain as tearing and not burning and as you know this would change the course of the diagnosis drastically. It is at this point that Dr. Jerome advised that you ask the patient what is their worst fear because that 30 year old woman with epigastric pain might tell you that she lost her friend to stomach cancer or breast cancer and it started in a similar way so it's important to know what is the most important concern of the patient and reassure the patient accordingly. This may also give you a new idea to explore as a clinician. The next step Dr. Jerome advised at this point is to repeat the physical examination and be more thorough at this time. It is possible that your first encounter with the patient was probably in an emergency situation and you carried out essential physical examination. But this gives you an opportunity to repeat the physical examination and be more thorough at this time. And if there are subtle clinical signs, you might pick them up at this point. Dr. Jerome also quoted a study that showed that the average time spent by doctors who had lawsuits filed against them was 16 minutes, while the average time spent by doctors who had never had a lawsuit filed against them was 18 minutes. Alongside other factors, a time difference of about 3 minutes was the difference between having a lawsuit filed against the doctor and not having a lawsuit filed against the doctor. So it's at this point you carry out a thorough physical examination. The next step Dr. Jerome recommended if you are still having difficulties making a diagnosis is to doubt the lab results. There is a chance that your biopsy might have missed the lesion that that smell might not have picked out that organism. There's also a chance that you have a false positive or a false negative in the particular test that you have ordered. It's also possible that your lab instruments were not well calibrated during the period of the test. It is at this point that you begin to doubt the results from the labs and you begin to repeat the requested investigations. This might be expensive, but 25 years of clinical experience says it is worth. If the diagnosis is still elusive at this point, it is high time to ask what else can it be? Is it possible that the patient has coexisting maladies? During training, most doctors are taught the Occam's principle, which loosely states that the simplest explanation to an array of problems is the most likely explanation. However, Occam's razor can be a cognitive trap and it is high time to ask if the patient has multiple maladies. The next cognitive trap is ego, the ego of the physician. In trying to help a patient, we should always remember that we are fallible as physicians. Ego becomes a cognitive trap when the doctor wants to be the last bus stop 
of the patient. Dr. Jerome advised that in these situations, the best way to break that cognitive trap of ego is to promptly and pleasurably refer the patient to another doctor who would see the patient anew without any preconceived notion. Sometimes you might have given the patient the drug of choice for a particular ailment or malady and the patient might still complain of not feeling okay. And at this point, he strongly cancelled against telling the patient nothing is wrong with you and he advised against that statement nothing is wrong with you because it precludes the fact that the physician is fallible it also precludes the fact that there can be psychosomatic illnesses wrong with the patient so even though you are giving your choice drug to the patient it is still possible that the patient might still have the particular symptoms that he or she might have been complaining don't rule out the fact that people respond to different medications differently Dr. Jerome also emphasized the fact that the hospital, the clinic is not an assembly line or a factory line where patients are supposed to be seen within a fixed period of time and they are supposed to leave the office with the doctor having a diagnosis. And he mentioned this because of the pressure that clinicians are often under from hospital administrators. Lastly, Dr. Jerome had this to say that even though in his clinical experience he had read a lot of books, attended a lot of seminars to help him be able to make diagnosis and treat patients accordingly, that in all this, one thing that is constant is the patient. You can always go back to the patient and reassess the patient. Finally, Dr. Jerome had this to say that even though you have a barrage of tests and investigations available at your disposal with all the high-tech medical equipment at your beck and call, you should never forget that the most valuable resource you have as a clinician is your patient and the patient is always with you in the good times as well as the bad times and you should never forget to return to your patient to reassess your patient and find a solution that is acceptable to your patient even if that means you referring the patient to another physician for expert care. This will bring us to the end of this review. How Doctors Think is a beautiful medical memoir. It's not as funny as Dr. Adam K's This Is Going To Hurt and, and it's not as emotional as When Bread Becomes Air. However, it's a beautiful book and I recommend it. It has a rating of 3.9 on Goodreads. This will bring us to the end of this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and see you in the next book review.